Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we are going to talk about marble. We're going to talk about a nice, fast, fun, easy way to do marble. Uh, I had posted up a diorama I did recently of some marble, and people asked me how I did it, so here's the hobby cheating for that. We're going to integrate a technique called sissing, which is normally done on things like oil paints and some other bigger acrylic painting, people who do faux, uh, sorry, faux marble countertops, stuff like that. Uh, so what do we have here? Well, we have a base that I've primed. Uh, to mostly white, though you can see there is some tonal variation in there still with gray, and that's fine. That's what we want. So what are our tools going to be for this? Well, we've got three colors. You can use these three or any three you like. They just need to have some tonal similarity. So here I have cyanide gray, cement gray, and white gray. They all have a brown gray similarity to them. We also have some army painter... Uh, strong Tone and some Agrax Earthshade. You can use any two shades you like, but I happen to like these two for this purpose because the brown will align well with here. And then the real secret that you can't replace, Retarder Medium. Uh, this, you've got to have the Retarder Medium. Now, it doesn't have to be this brand. You don't have to necessarily have the Vallejo, but you need some kind of Retardant Medium. And so we're going to start out. What we've done is we've mixed uh, more or less 2 to 1 Retardant Medium and the mid-tone of cement gray. Okay, brush-wise, we need a nice fat brush to lay the paint down. We need a relatively sharp tip brush that's of some size and a very, very fine tip brush for some detail we're gonna do later. We need an extremely soft bristled dry brush, like super, super duper soft, okay? It cannot be a hard bristled dry brush, so you've got to have something that's just unbelievably soft. And then finally, we need an extremely hard bristled big brush, okay? So those are our tools. Okay, so let's start out. We've got our mix here of our uh, cement gray and medium, and we're going to slop a bunch of that paint up onto our brush, and we're just going to get it down here on this base. And what we're going to do is, we're, notice I'm always moving in the same direction. We're just going to slop it on and then spread it around. But we're going to always be moving our brush in the same direction. Now, it's going to have brush strokes like crazy, like you can see the brush strokes there. Perfectly fine. Doesn't matter a bit. We want some. We want some brush strokes on there. We want lots of extra paint because part of this technique has to do with removing the paint, and so we want some extra on there. It's also not going to cover very well. That's okay. We don't need it to. We want a little bit of that variation to show through, okay? So we get a nice amount of paint on there. We're not letting it dry. We're just slopping some paint on here and kind of smoothing it out. We don't want any nice big ridges, but we don't care that much if there are, okay? So now you can see that's what we're dealing with so far. Maybe even a little more. Can't go wrong in this step. Well, you could, but we haven't yet. Okay. Okay. So, now, quickly, rinse our brush because we don't want that nasty, gross paint stain on there. We're going to need this brush later. And we're going to wipey, wipey, wipey over on a paper towel I've got here off camera. There we go. Nice, clean brush. Okay. Okay. So now we're going to take some of our cyanide gray, our dark color. We're going to go for our relatively sharp brush, and we're going to get into our paint, into our cyanide gray. Now what I'm going to do is somewhat in the same direction as my brush strokes, but not exactly. I'm going to basically draw a bunch of little lines. Okay. Now we don't need them to be incredibly sharp. We want them to be a little wavy. Okay. Now, you will start picking up the paint from the thing relatively quickly, and that's okay. You also don't want them to go in the exact same direction. You want the marble to have like a nice kind of rough pattern to it. Think almost like lightning, but not quite as wavy. You want some to kind of be just starting in the middle of nowhere and go off the thing. And then you want some to kind of... 
go like that. We want some with a little bit of like up to them, some with a little bit more down. Just go a little nuts. Have some fun. You can't make mistakes. There's just, this is all just happy little, little squiggles. Just happy little squiggles all living together. Okay. Something like that. Okay. All right. So, clean our brush off. Okay. Now, so we've got this. Now comes the trick. So, trick no, the first trick. We take our very soft bristled brush. Because we've used so much retardant medium, this paint is going to take for flipping ever to dry. We've effectively gotten rid of the defect of oil or of acrylic paint that it takes forever or sorry that it dries so quickly instead what we're going to do is we're going to pick a direction in this case i'm going to pick this direction here so moving at this angle across it and at that uniform angle we're just going to very lightly brush back and forth and just kind of smooth this out we're going to use the wetness of the paint to kind of smooth it out we don't want any any hard strokes. We want to stay relatively light. Okay. Okay. Now, how much each one moves is going to be largely dependent upon how dry it was. If you've got a little stubborn one like that at the bottom, it's okay. Don't worry about it. It's no big deal. Now, we did we get rid of our extra paint? Not by rig, not by getting this brush wet cuz this brush needs to stay bone dry throughout this process. So we're not putting this one in water. We're just wiping it on a paper towel. Okay. So, now next up, we take some of our strong tone or something like that or our agrax. In this case, we're going to start with a strong tone. And what we're going to do is we're just going to kind of drag it along on our ridge there. And then we're just going to kind of smooth out the edge. And we're going to take some of our strong tone. We're just going to kind of run it along. We're kind of redrawing some of the lines. Following the same ones we did. But we're not worrying about being too exact with it. We just kind of want to hint at these same lines. Okay. Okay. So now we get something like that. We're starting to get some variation in there. Guess what we do now? Go back to our super soft bristle brush and once again same direction we're just going to go ahead we're going to go back over it and you'll notice a lot of this gets mixed in that's what we want okay all right starting to smooth that out now we're going to take our agrax okay this is where we get to the scary part, but don't worry, it's fine. Okay, we're going to take some of our Agrax. And we're going to go, like, right along there and just kind of drop that in. Notice I'm being somewhat varyingly in the amount of how heavy I'm going to be, and some of those might have been just a little too much, but that's okay. We can always come back and pull it off, and it doesn't really matter. One of the great things about this particular method is it's hard to honestly screw up. You can just kind of have fun with it. Because what we're doing right now is really just kind of laying down some of our base color. Now, if you feel like you got a little too much on there, 
you can just kind of spread that out a little. Okay. Okay. Once again, guess what time it is? Time for the soft bristle brush. And this is going to make a big mess because this is still very wet. And that's okay. That's what we want. Okay. And we're just going to mix that right in together. So now what we get is something that looks like that. Now, if you get a little too much of one direction, you can always bring it back by just kind of going in the direction of the lines. Okay. Okay. So now we're starting to get something. We're starting to get a fun little effect here. Okay. Again, we wipe our brush off. All right, now comes the, the actual sissing part. Now comes trick the second. We got our big, heavy, hard bristled brush. We're going to dip it in our water, okay? And then aggressively, boom, boom. Two nice shots right at the, uh, we just kind of splayed the water right onto there. And what do we get? We get something that looks like that. You see those big droplets? Yeah, that's what we want. Now, what's happening under those droplets, okay, is that it's softening up the paint that's sitting underneath it, and we're changing the drying time of the two, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to let this sit for a minute because we want it to really loosen up that paint. What we're doing is changing the drying times because at this point, as we started pushing this paint around with a thin dry brush and pulling off the excess paint, we've started speeding up the drying time and undoing the work of the retardant, which is fine. That's what we want to happen. And we want that to happen, so it kind of smooths out, gives us some interesting texture with our brown lines. And if you ever get things that you don't particularly like or look too thick, you can always go back to your original paint and work some of that back on. That's what's nice about this technique, is I could go into my brush, get a little of this on here, push that back in. So if you ever pull off too much, you can just go right back into here, put it on, go right over it. If you get some brown lines you don't like, because this is a pretty organic method. It's not, you're not really flying with a lot of control. Okay, so that's probably sat long enough now. Now we're going to just take a nice clean paper towel, and we're going to start dabbing. This is actually the sissing. What we get here is a nice random pattern like that. Oh yeah, I like how that's looking. Look at that. Look at that nice. That look great. Like that really sells the effect. If you feel like you need a little more, guess what? You go back in your water. I feel like I need a little more like right over on that side. Big drops are your friend. Big drops do the work. So we let that sit a minute again. The more spotty you want it, the more you can, you know, the more you sis it. Okay? So we're going to let that sit for a moment. And once again, you can see it just softening up that paint. It's actually kind of good to do it a couple different times. That way you get, again, you're still playing with these varying drying times, playing with different amounts of paint being pulled off, right? How long you let the water sit. If it's water sitting on top of something you pulled up before, that kind of thing, okay? It all creates that natural organic look that we're going for. So now we just kind of dab around. And there we go. Okay. If you ever feel like you pull off too much, remember, you can always go back to this paint, push it on there. The other thing you can do is we can go right back to our dry brush, and guess what? We still have wet paint, so we can just kind of soften it right up. We just very lightly soften it right up. 
and there we go. You can still see where we have our spots. Here you can pull it. If you don't want it to qu quite look as uniform, we pull it in our original direction. And there we go, right? So now we've got a pretty nice marbled effect, but we can go farther, okay? So once again, we wipe off our brush. Now we get into the where do you want to stop phase, okay? As with most of my hobby cheating videos, there are various places you can stop along this road. So the next thing you can do is we get out our white gray. Uh, you thought I forgot about the white gray. I did not. Because now we need to create some little contrast veins. And this is where our short, our very sharp brush comes in. Okay. So what we're going to do now is in a similar random pattern and direction. We're just going to draw some very sharp lines. You want to make sure you go over some of the dark. You want to just kind of take it over everything. Again, you want to be very random with your pattern. Think almost like lightning bolts, right? All of this is just creating more visual confusion, and that's really the key to the marble. The pattern will look natural if there's a lot of visual confusion, just a lot of stuff going on, basically, is all that means. Okay, so now, hopefully that shows up. Yeah, there you go. Now we've got those nice white cracks in there. Helps really sell that effect. Once again, guess what we can do? If you want to kind of smooth it out, you don't want it to be that sharp. Very light touch. And just give it a little tiny blend. Just smooth it out a tiny amount. Okay. Okay, my brush got a little wet, and that's what happens. That's a good example of don't let this get wet. I let that one get slightly wet, and then it does this. See how it's streaked? That's okay. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to use that to our advantage. We're just going to pull hard in the other direction. Just use it to create a nice organic pattern there. Yeah, looks neat. Again... Because this is wet, you can keep pushing stuff around for a while. It's going to remain workable. So, there you go. We've got a nice marble effect. You can see we've still got our cracks and creases in there. Now, the next thing you can do is you can go back to your strong tone. Something like that. The key is, from this point, you want to let this kind of dry a little bit. Because I, I want to stop soaking off the paint of it. By the way, if you ever do want to put some of your original paint back on, as I mentioned, you could. Like, let's say you looked at this and you said, nah, that's a little too strong. Okay, we'll get a little bit of that paint on there. We pulled off a little too much or something. We can just work that right back in there, right? Move those colors around a little more. Again, because it's very wet all that drying retardant in there so if you've got some harsh lines maybe something didn't come out came out a little stronger than you want and then guess what now that you've got that drying meat retardant back in there and you've got some more wet paint what are you going to do i think you know what the answer is soft bristle brush let me make sure it's actually completely dry this time and flipping it around, I let, I let a big drop of water from my sissing get on it. And that's what caused that streaking. It wasn't the end of the world, though. As you can see, we're right back to where we were. And then we just kind of mix that in again. Smooth it right around. And 
There you go. So you can really play with your colors. Now, the next steps are things like this. Just as we did the light lines, you can take something like your strong tone, get it in your very sharp brush, and you can do your dark lines. Okay? So we can take that and we can go, we can trace a nice thin line. Now we want to be very, dark lines show up better than white lines. So you want to be very light touch with this. Because it will stand out. And that's fine. You just want to make sure that you don't get too much paint on there. If you want to follow some of your original lines that you had to kind of reinforce those, that's a good thing to do. So we can always do that. Kind of drag that right along there. Maybe have some new ones. Maybe work out, some, maybe reinforce some old ones. A little of both. All right. Again, we're just pushing that visual confusion. Okay. Again, guess what? If you if you want to keep it smooth, if you feel like it's a little too sharp, we go back to our very dry, soft bristled brush. I think you get the idea at this point, right? You see where this is going. And we can kind of just work it in a little. At this point, we're getting it pretty dry. It's been sitting here wet. I had about 15, 20 minutes of working time on it and still not completely set. That's pretty good. Okay. And there you go. So you can see how now you've got something that looks very nice, very organic marble. You want to keep pushing it around. You could do things like let it dry completely. I won't have time to, to do that here, but I'll show you exactly what I could do. If I wanted to, say, reinforce a line here, I could go back into my Agrax, okay? And I could actually use it. Once this the paint underneath is dry, I can actually use it like a real shade, okay? Yeah. You have to wait till it's completely dry to do this, I'll say that. Because otherwise you pull the paint up from underneath. So I'll tell you what, why don't we pause for a moment? Let's pause for the cause. I'll let this dry completely, and then I'll show you what you can do from this point to take it all the way up. So we'll pause there. We'll be back in just a moment to kind of do some, some extra steps if you want to keep going. All right, and we're back. And so now everything's dry. We got a little hair dryer. And you can see we've got a really nice random effect here with this marble it's looking good. It's looking organic. You can see where the sissing is taking effect. The more you blend it, the less you'll have the individual spots. If you like the look of the individual spots, do less of the, you know, sort of dry brush blending. But now we'll talk about some other stuff we can do. The other things we can do is if we want to go back in and now use some normal painting techniques, we can get some new army paint or strong tone out here on our palette. And we can... Let's say we don't like that this line looks exactly like it does. It's, you know, okay, we need to, maybe we want to blow that out a little bit. Okay, well, we can just get some strong tone here. All right, and we can kind of then do a little void blending, a little traditional painting, and we can kind of smooth that out. So same thing here. If this line looks a little too thick, or a little too well defined or something. We can kind of go over it with some strong tone. Then we kind of avoid some of it out. So we're just kind of working it in. Okay. So then we get kind of a more fuzzed effect. It can also be a way to build up some of these. If you want to have some that are like really heavy. You know, let's say you want to have this be a really nice, heavy, dark spot to your marble. Then we could build up a nice little amount here. Right? And then we just drag 
the edge out. So we're just working that tone in. We can do the same thing with the Agrax, although the Agrax will be stronger. So we have to be a little careful. This is all the extra bonus stuff. None of this is required. So if we want to say... And then same thing. Right? All I'm doing is just adding some of that in and then voiding the end of my, like cleaning the end of my brush. In this case, by eating the paint, you don't necessarily have to. If you don't want to eat paint, don't eat paint. Right? But that can help us work in some other tones, too. And you can let that dry and then go in and reinforce it again. Right? So then we get these nice little fades down from the lines. I quite like the look of that, right? So we get that. And then we kind of just smooth the edge a little. And what we get is these nice little effects where it looks almost like we have the hard line and then it builds up to it. And I think that, you know, this isn't an essential effect. You'll still get the marble look without it. But I will say that I really like taking this final step. I think it's one of those things that really sells it. Because marble often has this, like, sort of build up to it like that. So it's often in those just little end steps that you can make a big difference. You could also choose to work in some other colors here at the end. Like that is to say, we could take some seraphim sepia if we wanted to push this a little more brown and do the same trick, right? So if we wanted to have this entire thing have a little more brown coloration to it. Okay. So there we go. Now we've got some nice, you can see those nice effects where we've built up. All we're doing again is just picking a spot, dragging our brush sideways along it, eventually to a thin point, like that. We get the paint off the end, and then we go back, and we just void blend it in a little bit. Okay. And we get something like that. Now, the final thing we can do and our optional thing is we can do one more round of our little white cracks. Marble has a lot of different veins that run through it. You could even get out a second color of white here and be really, really, really light touch with it if you wanted to. Like you could have a couple different colors of light white veins running through the marble. In this case, we're just going to go back to our white gray again. And this time we're going to be really, really controlled with it. Okay, so we're just going to kind of come in. And we're just going to do the tiniest little lines in just a few places. And you want to make sure you run over some of your brown. Because it should look like all of this is just crisscrossed over top of each other just constantly. Okay, so we'll do one more here. And there we go. So now you can see those final white lines just again, kind of mixing everything up. And there you go. There's your marble effect. You can keep pushing it around. You notice how every time I made all of the fade ups on the same side of the line, so that is to say, almost like a natural shadow. What I mean by that is, if this is the hard line, I put the shadow from the with the wash underneath it, and underneath it, and underneath it, underneath it, right? That just helps sells the effect. So there you go. That's some quick and dirty marble. Uses a lot of fun techniques. So what are our keys again? 
some kind of retardant medium to get yourself some very wet paint mixed two to one with your mid-tone color. You start working in your veins, bone dry, very soft bristled brush moved in some kind of direction like that. And then every so often, once every four or five times you do it, you want to go back with your original direction of paint, just so you kind of smooth it all out and keep it all not necessarily looking like it's traveling in the exact same direction. Work it in. Sizzing, you need a nice hard bristled brush that you can flip on some water with. You let it sit for a moment, and then you uh, and then you use your paper towel, something like that, to spot and pull it off. That'll create your dots. Depending on how strong you want those dots to be, you can then either smooth again or not, like depending on where you leave it. Then you let it dry completely, and then you can go in and just void blend in some under shadows under your lines, you can work in some stronger lines like I did here, and you can put in some white veins or your contrasting high color veins, whatever they happen to be. Because you could do this with a lot of different colors. Um, you want to stay in sort of the tones of marble. I wouldn't try this with like bright fire red or something. I don't know that I've ever seen fire red marble. But you could do the same thing with uh, mid-tone greens and stuff like that. There's lots of green marble. You could do it with sort of a, uh, a crimson color to a gray. I've seen lots of stuff like that. Just Google marble. Look at some images, and that'll give you some color ideas. It's really just three paints, a couple shades. You're good to go. So there you go. That's your fun, fast, uh, messy, messy marble effect. Hope you enjoyed it. Give it a like if you did. Subscribe for more hobby cheating in the future. Share it with somebody if you think they'd like it. That's always the nicest thing you can do. And as always... We'll see you next time.